joining us in the studio now is world super middleweight champion Carl Froch. Carl, welcome to the show. Second time on, as promised, you have come back as the world champion. That's right, yeah. You promised it. At times, we wondered. He was looking decidedly nervy rounds one through six. Did you feel nervous? Um, prior to going in, I was pretty cool, but I, got, I sort of got rushed into the ring a little bit. Um, the Alan Green fight went quick. Coming to the rooms with the gloves, you've got ten minutes, uh, put them on. And, and I, I wasn't really, I mean, no excuses, but I usually have 45 minutes, a little bit of a warm-up and hit the pads and do what you do, a little yeah. stretch. So I got, I got dragged into the ring against my will. Um, before the time, but I thought, you know what, I'll get in now, I'll be all right, no problems. And there's a little bit of a slow start, to be mm -hmm. fair, but no excuses. Jermaine Taylor is a great fighter, and I found he was very quick, a little bit too quick with his jab, mm -hmm. and he was catching me with counter punches, and that was a problem earlier. He, he was, he was quicker than, than possibly you and Robert and the, and the rest of your team expected. Now, so we have, you know, we have, a, we have a laugh on this show, Carl, we're not against having a laugh. We always ask you to play Johnny Cash songs and stuff, and we do have a little <laughs> bit of a giggle, but I've got to be honest with you, I, I'm, you know, I think we've got to be serious when we talk about what you're, where, you know, where you go from here and what you do from here. Because there's, there's a lot of fights. I was in Vegas last weekend. A lot of fights being mentioned. Obviously, Hopkins being mentioned. I bumped into Lucien Boutte, I think mm. is the way you pronounce it. I bumped into his people, and they were all over me saying, Tell Carl, we'll fight, we'll fight him, no problem. we we'll fight him, no problem. Now, we know Mar Mike Marley's been on the phone talking about you know, Kessler, saying that fight can be made. What, what, where are we with what's going to happen with you in the next couple of months, Carl? Seriously. I think after speaking to Mick Hennessy last, over the last couple of days, he's out in Germany at the minute, um, I think he's talking to Kessler's people. Good. But we seem to be making some ground. There's nothing official, nothing signed, nothing done, but we're making ground with, you just mentioned him, Lucian Butte. Yeah, um, that's the one I heard. Butte, for, yeah. for Canada. Yeah, and it's, it's a fight that I'm definitely interested in, because as yeah. you know, I'm, I'm WBC champ, and I'm, I want to unify the belts. I don't mm. just want to sit around and, and fight nobodies and defend against, against yeah. nobodies. He's a champion in the and a heart. He's a tough champion. Exactly. He's a tough champion. He's IBF champion and it gives me the chance to unify the division and that's you, something I want to do. Will you go there or do you expect him to come here this time? You know what? I don't expect anything in this sport. No. I, I've got no expectations with boxing. I'm champion. You see what I did? I went over to, um, I went over to America to Connecticut, mm -hmm. fought Jermaine Taylor in his backyard. I didn't have the backing of British TV and I went out there and I still got on with it and I did it. And I'm not going to complain about it, I'm really not. Those if, are I just have the facts. Go, if I have to go yeah. to Canada and fight Lucian Butte over there, I'll do it. But ideally, I'd like to get a fight in Nottingham just for my fans. Yeah. Mm. But, but in Canada, you're big, I mean, I know this sounds like a joke, but you're big in Canada because your fights were shown live in Canada. Pascal was obviously shown live in Canada. This fight last week, uh, sorry, the, um, the Taylor fight mm. got big figures yeah, in yeah. Canada. And he's monster, where is it, in Montreal or wherever he's, yeah, wherever Montreal. he's based, Butte. He's, Andy, he's massive. He pulls it's in. big news. After the oh, fight with me, it's big. He's unbelievable. Big. He pulls in massive crowds, this kid. So that would be, I understand what you're saying. It's always nice to have a homecoming fight. Yeah. You know? yeah. But at the same time, that, this, this is a fight that in some ways makes sense to go over and have yeah, over yeah. there because yeah. assuming, you know, yeah. big house, you'd get a few quid. Of course, yeah. I mean, he pulls a big crowd in Montreal. They're talking about 15,000, 20,000 fans. But with the Canadian dollar the way it is, if you work it out in comparison, it's probably the same as getting 7,000 at Nottingham Arena. Okay, good point. So, yeah, yeah. I prefer it to be in Nottingham. I'm a champion. I've already been abroad and done my thing and travelled yeah. and had the jet lag and had, had the hostile crowd. So it'd be nice and that's what I'm going to be pushing for to get it in Nottingham. Would you be with. prepared? We talk about, about it being more important to put money on the table because you have a family to feed. Would you be happy to do it the other way, to get the belts so that your last couple of fights, once you've got all the belts, you can then make the big money and finish with the super fights with the money, but get the belts first? Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to get the IBF and the WBA. So there's Lucian Butte and there's Mikel Kessler. I can't get up for um, defending. I mean, I've got an option, I think, to defend against the voluntary in, um, in Nottingham. And I've said to Mick, I don't want to fight a voluntary. He said, go through the top ten, have a look, and we'll pick someone. Do you know who the voluntary said, is, by any chance? I mean, do you know who the voluntary is? Well, I want to say voluntary, it's you, whoever you, you want. You, yeah, was, do you know, you know who the voluntary would be? I mean, have you got like a there's, list of... I mean, Alan Green boxed on the bill, and he, yeah. he didn't look bad. And then there's a few other names in the top, in the top five, top ten, who potentially... The, it'd be acceptable yeah. by the WBC for me to defend against the voluntary. But like I said to Mick, can't I can't get up for it. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm 32 in July. I've probably got three, four years left, and I want the big fight. So I'm six go or in seven there. of these big fights. I want to go in there with the big guns. And I've, I've, I've said from the start I'm serious about becoming champion. I want to become undisputed champion. And I'm standing by that. And if I have to go in next with Mikel Kessler, everyone's saying, oh, that's the yeah, hardest not. fight out there for you. Mm -hmm. Don't fight him. I'll fight him and I'll prove everybody wrong. Now what about, have you had any more thought about that Hopkins fight, the one that Lou DiBella sort of tantalisingly threw out have, the last time I you have, were yeah. on? Because he, he, was, he talked to me about it, Hopkins. Yeah, I spoke I to Mick about it. I, I heard a little piece on the radio, yeah. actually, Radio 5 um, was doing a bit, and uh, I heard that. Um, I think the problem with Hopkins and his people, Hopkins is like the main 
he's the main man and he's the big yeah. deal and he's, he's the fighter that everybody's interested in. Yeah. So he tends to price himself out of the market or he tends to want to give you peanuts, peanuts. for fighting. For the honour to fight him. He'll want 80%, you get 20%. So it's unrealistic. If, the, if it was realistic and if we could do it not at 175 but maybe 172 pounds, which is 12 stone 4, yeah. I could comfortably do that. It'd make Hopkins do a bit of weight and I think that'd be fairer than me going over to America for not just great money as champion, just to yeah. say, yeah, okay, I'll fight you. Yeah. And it's not a major, it's not a fight I'm majorly interested in anyway. He's, he's not no, a champion. No, it's, it's a potentially ugly fight. The only reason for having it is if the odd, if the shaving was better, if it wasn't 80-20, if it was slightly more in your favour, and there was shed loads of cash. But he is like that, Hopkins. I mean, in the last six months, he's been connected to David Hayter Day by Golden Boy and yeah. Schaefer. Was that for the heavyweight fight? Yeah, for the heavyweight. I mean, they're, I mean, they're throwing, you know, it was a Darmek for a while, and they went and met with Thomas Adarmek, the cruiserweight, the Polish guy, who's probably the best cruiserweight in the world. Uh, and they went and met with him, and I'm, I'm reliably told they offered him that sort of deal, you know, 85-15. Yeah, because yeah. as you say, he, as far as he's concerned, he's the main man. I was looking at uh, Ring magazines, pound for pound, and they have him as the number two guy in the world right now. Which but he is... owns the magazine. Where do you yeah, think exactly. they're going to have him? They're not going to have Carl Froch above him, are they? <laughs> but that's the, the point, though. He wants to yeah. see himself as yeah. the man, doesn't he? It's, it's a complicated one. With... I mean, when I say 8 to 20, there's, no f there's nothing been yeah, firmly exactly. discussed. Yeah, that was, but that that's what he does. He prices yeah. himself out of it. And if you, if you work it out, it's always round about that. What well, about like Kelly Pavlik? That would be a fight that would be talked about as Kelly Pavlik having to come up as opposed to mm. you going up. Yeah. It's been mooted. Would that interest you? It, it does, yeah. Kelly Pavlik's a big name and um, he's obviously a good fighter, very tough and strong. The only man other than myself to beat Jermaine Taylor. But it's, it's someone I'd definitely like to fight. I think he's quite basic. He obviously punches hard and he's, he's tough and he's strong. Tough, yeah. I don't think he's as strong at, at super middleweight, but I didn't think Jermaine Taylor was going to be as strong at super middleweight. So you can't underestimate anybody. They do fancy you and talking to the American journalists, um, they sort of said, you know, Hopkins is one. Obviously, they sort of heard of Kessler because they're a bit, they're a little bit stuck in their own world, the American journalists, as I'm sure you found out when you were over yeah, in Connecticut. Absolutely. But they did, obviously, they know you now and they do know you now as well. That's not a joke. They really do know you now. And the one fight that, is, let's say, half a dozen I spoke to, the one fight that kept coming up was you against Pavlik. It was something that certainly they fancied the idea and certainly Bob Arum fancied the idea yeah. of. Listen, Carl, let me, let me move you on a little bit, mate, and thanks mm -hmm. for coming in. I want to ask you a little bit about uh, Ricky Hatton, and try and put yourself in Ricky Hatton's shoes. After all those fights, all that money, 40-odd million yeah. quid, what do you think you would do, um, let's assume, you know, yeah. I don't want to see anyone knocked out, let's just say, let's say you're in the end of your career, you lost a couple of big fights, yeah. what do you think you would do at that if, stage? If I was in this position, me being me, yeah. I'd retire. Good. If that's what you're asking, I'd definitely yeah, retire. I am. Because he's, he's achieved... He's achieved so much um, with his, the style in which he fights, the way in which he fights, the way in which he takes the fight to the opponent. He uses fitness, brute force, he's brutal, he's rough and tough, he's rugged, and he gets the job done. 98% of the time he gets the job done, yeah. but it's hard, it's hard for him. Takes his time. And that's why I've got so much respect for Ricky Hatton, because it's hard for him. He goes in there, he does the business, and um, obviously he's come up against two pound-for-pound -pound best fighters in the world, and he's come unstuck, nothing to be ashamed of. And um, with the money he's earned and the success he's had, he's definitely entitled to turn it in. Listen, that, really you know what? I've heard, I've read lots of things, and that just about sums up, in my opinion, perfectly. Carl, thanks for coming in, mate. And we'll Always speak a pleasure. to you. Hopefully, um, you, you won't get... fight before September, will you? Oh, sorry, probably, will you fight before probably September? Probably will be September. Good. Right, well, drop, us a, uh, drop us a line, give us a shout when See you get after the the summer. Summer, won't you? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Tremendous. Carl, watch on the show, Andy. Indeed, Carl. Congratulations, by the way. That was tremendous. Thank a couple you. Of weeks back.